Okay, so if you know a little bit of geometry and a little bit of algebra, you just may very well be able to figure out this problem. So here is a situation. We have this figure right here, and this shape right here is called a trapezoid. So this is a trapezoid, and the objective is to find the area of these two uh, blue shaded regions. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and actually read you the question, but I've pretty much told you that, but we do have an important detail here uh, that you need in order to solve this problem. So the question is, the area of the entire trapezoid is 48. What is the area of the shaded region or regions? Because we have these two blue regions, and this is, of course, what we're looking to calculate the area for. Okay, so if you think you can figure this out, and I have confidence that, in fact, you'll be able to solve this problem, or at least most of you can, uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so obviously, you know, I kind of explained the problem. Hopefully this is clear, but we do have this kind of situation down here. We have these X's, right? So we're like, well, what do we do with that? Well, of course, we're going to have to get into that in just one second. But first, we need to just kind of go back to the very basics. So uh, that is, of course, anytime you have some sort of problem, any math problem, you have a figure, you have a problem, read the problem more than once. I like to use the rule three, uh, three times. Just look at the figure, look at the information in the problem, and think about this before you start doing things. Come up with a strategy. Now, what could be our strategy here to find the area of these two blue regions? Well, we could do one or two things. Because we have the entire area of this trapezoid, uh, we could um, look to say, well, you know what? I could find the area of this trapezoid right here and subtract it away from the area of the big uh, trapezoid. And what's uh, remaining would be these uh, two regions. And that's not a bad uh, strategy. Um, now, there is another approach we could take, and that could be, well, how about we just find uh, the area of these two triangles? And that's not a bad uh, strategy as well. But in either case, we're going to have to figure out what this x is equal to. Okay, we have this x, x, and x, and x. Now, uh, another thing here that some of you may uh, notice in this particular um, figure, and this is something that sometimes uh, math teachers just love to do on particular math exams or test questions, is if you notice here, this x represents the length from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here. Now, this particular measure definitely looks longer than these measures. This, these kind of look equal distance. But here's the thing. Just because uh, the figure doesn't match the, the given information, you have to go with what you have. In other words, uh, and, uh, what I just said right there probably doesn't make any sense, but let me just say it this way. If I'm saying that this length is uh, equal to x, even though it doesn't look like it, we're going to have to just assume that, yes, indeed, all these um, are the same measure. So in other words, if this was three inches, this is three, this is three. And yes, this would be three, even though it doesn't look like it's the same uh, length as the others. Okay. So sometimes, again, on tester quizzes or uh, exams, especially on uh, things like uh, college entrance exams, they just love to put in little sneaky little figures. So just be mindful that don't you know, look at the figure and be like, no, nah, this can't be the same. No, just go by the given information. Okay, so we need a strategy here, and we're going to have to use the given information to figure out um, what this X is equal to, because we can't do anything in terms of finding area of these uh, regions, these subregions, until we figure out what X uh, is equal to, and we're going to have to use some algebra to solve for that variable X. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and first... Uh, consider the formula for an area of a trapezoid, okay? Because obviously, as I told you in the beginning of this uh, video, that we're going to need a couple formulas. So we're talking about the area of a trapezoid, so, so it's a good idea to know the formula. And of course, we have triangles involved as well, and we'll t uh, show you that formula in just a second. So this is a trapezoid, okay? Now, what is a trapezoid? Well, it's a four-sided uh, uh, polygon, and of course, it's a type of special uh, quadrilateral. The main thing about uh, trapezoids is that the opposite sides here are parallel. Okay, they're parallel. They're not, you know, uh, doing, you know, this kind of business like this. 
Uh, now you may have a quadrilateral, but in a trapezoid, opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so that's the main um, idea. And uh, here we have two sides. Okay, we oftentimes call these the base sides. And uh, the uh, formula for the area of a trapezoid can uh, be different as well. Okay, this could be B1 or base one or base two so but effectively it's the same formula so we have this uh, length right here and this length right here so we're going to call this a and b and effectively what we're going to be doing is just taking one half of the sum in a and b okay and it's almost like finding the average of these heights and then we're going to um of these distances excuse me and then we're going to multiply by the height okay and of course the height will be perpendicular to those bases. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And again, this is the area or the formula for the area of a trapezoid. All right, so uh, clearly, you know, we can solve for some things here because we have some pretty good amount of information in this figure. And we know that the uh, area of this trapezoid is 48. So let's go ahead and employ some algebra to set up an equation. Okay, so the area of the entire trapezoid right here, this entire thing uh, is 48. Okay, so that's what the area is equal to. And we know that one of the base uh, measurements here is eight, okay? And we also have the height. So the only thing that we're missing is this right here, which would be, uh, in this case, like the B measurement. So we have uh, A is equal to eight, and B is equal to, well, we have X, X, and X, and X. We don't know that, but we definitely know the height and we have the area, so we're just missing one variable here, and we have uh, we have all this other given information, so we can solve for b. Okay, now we'll get to x here in a second, but b is the this entire length right here. Okay, so let's just get that measurement first, and then we'll work on getting x. All right, so let's go to plug everything we uh, need to plug in. So the area of the trapezoid is 48. We have one half a again, is that's that uh, top length of our trapezoid or our base one, that's eight plus B. Now, of course, we don't know what B is equal to, but we have the height, the height is four. Okay, so right here, hopefully you can see how this uh, formula and all the given information sets up for this lovely formula or equation right here. Okay, so we use the formula to set up an equation, and now it's up to you and your algebra skills to solve for this variable B. Now, a little tip here. In algebra, uh, I've seen this happen uh, through the years multiple times. It is so easy. The variable, the lowercase b, okay, here we have a, b, c, for example, very common variables in algebra. Here's the deal with b, okay? Now, you have to use b because, again, it's common, okay? Uh, so b looks like six, okay? Uh, it can so easily get <laughs> morphed into a six. You got to be very careful. And I've even made this mistake. So, you know, you have to say, okay, this is the variable B and not the number six as you're doing a bunch of work. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, first, uh, we'll do a couple different approaches we can um, take here. We have four times one half. This is one big product, right? So it's this times this times this. So we'll just take this four and multiply by one uh, half. Uh, remember, in multiplication, order doesn't make a difference. 2 times 1 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2 times 1. So I could just uh, shuffle these around. So 4 times 1 half is 2. Okay, so now I have 2 times 8 plus B. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the distributive property and distribute in that 2 to this uh, 8 and B. So 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times B is 2B, and that's equal to 48. So now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 16 from both sides of the equation. Now, I didn't really show that step here, but I'll show it real quick. And uh, 48 minus 16 is 32. So 32 is equal to 2B. So to solve for B, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, and B will, uh, is equal to 16. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's go over here and uh, revisit our figure. Okay, so this was a and this or this uh, is a and this is b okay so b is 16. all right so now we're in good shape to find this variable x because uh, this whole length of b is split up in four sections okay all equal distance and it's x x x and x so i could set up another equation to solve for x right x plus x 
plus x, x plus x plus x plus x, right? All these x's is what? That's four x's, but that's equal to the length of 16. So we can set up this basic equation, four x is equal to 16, and solve for x by dividing four from both sides of the equation. So x is equal to four. Okay, so stick with me. I know a lot of you are like, boy, this problem is a little bit uh, harder than, it's not hard. It's just, you need to pick a strategy and do the work, okay? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, this word is something that you want to make friends with because uh, you're going to have to do uh, anything good takes work. And that's poor grammar. But if it's, uh, you know, if you're trying to look for shortcuts or easy paths or just skip doing the work, especially in math problems, you're just going to set yourself up for failure. OK, so. You know, just kind of uh, have a determined effort when you start a math problem. Like, all right, I'm just going to just do, you know, let the process take, you know, take its own kind of path, if you will, right? Do the step one te a step at a time. And some problems will take you a decent amount of work. But you know what? Uh, you'll be proud of yourself when you finally solve the um, actual question. Okay, so here we go. So we did solve for X. Remember X, these were all X's here. X was equal to four, so each one of these sections now is four. So this is four, 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 and four. Now at this point, it's really a matter of preference. We do have this trapezoid right here. Some of you uh, might have said, you know what, I'm gonna find the area of this trapezoid, and then subtract away from the big area. That's perfectly fine. But um, being that we have a couple triangles, let's review the area of triangles as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the area of these uh, two triangles, and then we'll add up these two triangles, and of course, that'll be the region uh, that we're looking for. Now, uh, we're going to need to remember the formula for the area of a triangle, and of course, that is the area is equal to one half base times height. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this right now. We'll finish this problem up. So here is our two triangles, and uh, we need to consider what is the base and what is the height. So this triangle here, the base is four and four or eight, and the height is still four, okay, right here. So it's still four, and this triangle, its uh, base is four and its height is four. So let's just go ahead and plug in the respective information, and we're almost there. So area is equal to one half base times height, or one half eight times four. One half of eight is four, four times four is 16, and over here, one half base times eight, height, one half of four times four, uh, of course, is, uh, going to be two times four, which of course is eight or one half of 16. And so now we are going to just simply add up those two uh, triangles to find the entire area of the entire region, which of course is 24. Now, again, you could have gotten to the same answer by finding the area of this trapezoid and subtracting it away from the entire uh, uh, bigger trapezoid. And that's perfectly fine as well. But uh, you doing it this way it gives you know gave us a, an opportunity to review the area of a triangle. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.